Here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk Radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk Radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. This is my opportunity to really tick off some people, because I've certainly done that in the last few days. Watching the events of the week out of D.C., the storming of the United States Capitol building. I'm going to offer some thoughts. You may disagree. A lot of people do. We should, of course, be able to discuss things and disagree without name-calling or buying into the cancel culture idea. The cancel culture, of course, is the we must boycott, we must destroy, we must call all of someone's sponsors or business associates or clients or customers, get them shut down. Really? Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that what the Antifa guys do? And we complain about that, and yet we'll turn around and do the exact same thing sometimes on our side? With all that in mind, a few of my ideas and takes, my take on what just happened and what it means to us. Because I end up always, you got to understand, I start and end from the position of how do we win? And for me, winning is Second Amendment winning. It's gun rights winning. Is what we're doing at any given time helping us win or does it hurt us? And Lord knows we have enough people on our side who do both, help us and hurt us. So a few thoughts here. Events of the week. We, we had a very small group of people out of a very large group of people who showed up at the Capitol. The small group stormed the Capitol, broke in, broke the law, broke federal laws. A bunch of them are going to get, they're, they're being charged, but I think they're going to be surprised because people were killed at this event. And these people are going to be charged with those deaths. What, Tom? What are you talking about? People say, well, yeah, this is not a Second Amendment thing. Our people didn't have guns. Well, you know, I'll get to that in a second. But if you are involved in a home invasion and one of the guys in, in the home invasion shoots and kills the homeowner, you get charged with that murder. I will simply not be surprised if federal prosecutors don't do exactly that. Was it criminal activity? Of course it was. Of course it was criminal. Of course it broke the law. People say, well, you know, there are some that said the American Revolution was criminal activity. That's true. If you ask the British at the time, absolutely true. And I guess history will end up positioning this somehow. But let me spin right up to what does all this mean for our Second Amendment rights? Now, each of us is going to see this week, these events, through the lens of our own personal history, our frame of reference, you know, the influences we each expose ourselves to, and the inevitable biases each of us have. A few random thoughts here trying to put this in some sort of perspective. Under the heading of what did they think was going to happen, putting this into perspective for those who may not have connected the dots, go all the way back to, oh, gee, President Obama says they cling to their guns and their religion. Hillary Clinton called us a basket of deplorables. For those of us with long enough memories, the Ruby Ridge debacle was the feds coercing Randy Weaver into cutting off a shotgun barrel, changed his court date, killed his son, killed his wife over a what? A $200 tax. What, what, what's that you say, Tom? Yes. They coerced him into cutting a pipe too short, a shotgun barrel, which would have been legal if he had paid the $200 tax on it. And because he didn't pay the $200 tax, it was a gun charge. They killed his son. They killed his wife. Waco, 76 people killed, including 25 people. Why? Because they had a warrant for not paying a $200 firearms tax. Democratic politicians in the media have been brandishing, or branding rather, tens of millions of Americans as racist. It's a political tactic used with no regard to how those being slandered would react. This is all under the heading of what 
did they expect? We also see a consistent, unrelenting drumbeat of belittling, marginalizing, and silencing millions of people because they have a view or even a lifestyle that's different from those of the coastal elites. The reality is that this was inevitable. Actions have consequences. Okay? However, there's a real big however here. What does this mean for gun rights, for the Second Amendment? What, where are we now? <sighs> the election. Reality. Biden and Harris are in. That's very bad. Their gun ban agenda is very bad. I also think, and this is where I get into my personal opinion, okay? I think the focus on the election fraud cost us the U.S. Senate races out of Georgia. That's very bad. That was a real opportunity to build a bit of a wall to keep the Democrats and the gun banners from having complete control over Congress and the White House. But I think, honestly, President Trump focusing on this and pushing this and yammering about this cost us the Georgia Senate election, both of them, the races. I think the assault on the U.S. Capitol has given the gun ban lobby leverage. People say, well, but, but Tom, the people who were storming the Capitol, they didn't have guns. It's not really a Second Amendment issue. Yeah, it is. Why? And this is where we, I talk about the difference between playing checkers and playing 3D chess. This is, the world is 3D chess, it's not checkers. And a lot of our people seem to be unable to understand that this is about optics, it's about perception, it's about the reaction to that perception. And you could say all you want to, that we didn't bring guns there, but people got shot. A lot of the protesters, the people at the rally were wearing military-ish garb, if you will. It played perfectly into the agenda, into the narrative of the media. Those radical right-wing gun owners ended up getting people killed. And then, of course, you got people say, well, you know, that was really Antifa in there. Oh, well, yeah, okay. There may have been a few there, but, I mean, come on. Ashley Babbitt, the 14-year Air Force veteran who was shot and killed there, she wasn't Antifa. You know, almost everyone who went to that rally had no intention of doing harm or breaking in. However, some went there spoiling for a fight. I had a nice conversation this morning with a friend of mine who was there. First-hand knowledge, watching what was going on. He said, for the most part, everybody was upbeat and positive and just wanted to be at a rally. And then there were the others who were there. There's always somebody there who wants to pick a fight, whether it's in a bar or somewhere else. And if you go in, you break into the Capitol and you rip Nancy Pelosi's name off of her door, you go into her office and you go into the speaker's office and you go in. What do you think the reaction's going to be? Do you think that people are going to respond favorably to that? That day cost us tens of millions of votes in upcoming elections. And I get back to people say, well, we, we were right. And I know it really ticks people off when I say this. I don't care whether you were, whether you're not. I, I, I don't care. It doesn't help us win. I want to win back my gun rights. This is going to make it really much easier for the gun banners in Congress to push anti-gun legislation, about, to curb those crazies. You know, the people who stormed the Capitol, they're, they're calling it now an insurrection, which of course it wasn't, but hey, that's a narrative. We gave them the ammunition. Where do we go from here? Ah. <sighs> I was looking at some of the posts from the 
bombs demand action, action in every town for gun safety, and they've got their phone bank set up, and people are volunteering, and they're working for home, and they're making the calls, and I'm thinking, we didn't do any of that. We didn't show up again. Showed up at the Capitol for the, you know, stop the steal effort, but we won't show up for gun rights. I tell you what, let me talk about that on the backside. You know, if we're not showing up, we're not going to lose. The world belongs to those who show up. The world actually belongs to a majority of people who show up, not to the majority of people. That is who gets to make up the rules. That's who gets to determine what happens.